when uh, my husband and I first started trying, we had, we had recently sold my company. You know, we had, we had done the whole building our businesses thing for years. That was kind of our marriage. We had been married for about five years. Um, so we did, we did the married, no kids thing for a while and enjoyed it. And then it, there was just a point where we said, okay, let's, let's do this. Mm. We conceived the first try with my very first baby. Um, and that was in December of 2018. Mm -hmm. And we had, you know, we just were completely clueless on any type of abnormalities, you know, chromosomal. We just didn't know. I was 29 at the time. My husband was barely 31. I mean, there was just no reason to think we were high risk. Yeah. Um, and so we did the NIPT test and just to figure out the gender. And we got this, this terrifying call from my doctor that we had trisomy 18. Um, and then we went down the road and of course it was confirmed. Um, so, you know, the pregnancy ended on its own around the same exact time we were planning to terminate it anyway. That's so hard. the decision was semi made for us, but, um, it was a little girl and we were just heartbroken. I just cried for weeks. You know, I was 29. I was in peak health. I was in shape. I worked out. I ate properly. I was traveling a lot, but I mean, I was just really on top of everything. I, we don't have anything that runs in our family. We ended up doing an entire panel of genetic testing. Oh, we went, wow. we went yeah. crazy and just did it all. And there was nothing that came up. So mm -hmm. these things just happen and it was heartbreaking but it changed our perspective on trying. Mm -hmm. um, we really started to know that there were these, these problems and these you know, risks that were out there that we could not control. We had the DNC January of 2020 and my period finally came back in March and then we conceived in July. Oh. So my little April baby, my little rainbow, mm -hmm. Olivia Parker, um, yeah, and that's then that's lovely. both family names, but, um, she was, um, our little rainbow baby and just healthy as a, a clam. She's, she's just perfect. And, Great. um, she was worth, she was worth it all. Okay. And then I was breastfeeding. So I breastfed her for 11 months around the six month mark. My period came back and I just mm -hmm. wanted to track it. We weren't trying. It was really just like natural. We were, we were still protecting actually. But I just wanted to see where I was at because um, I just I knew from the DNC that my body could be different hormonally. Mm -hmm. And if there was any potential delay in us wanting to conceive that second one, I just needed to understand what I was working with, you know? Yeah. And so I was tracking it and my ovulation was a little later. I was noticing that I would feel crampy the same day I would get a positive OPK. Mm. And I'm like, well, that's weird. That's just so different than it was with Olivia, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, I got a positive OPK and then I'd have the ovulation cramps, you know, two days later, kind of typical what it's supposed to be. And so I, I kind of started noticing that my ovulation was just really, really rapid onset. Secondly, I also noticed that my luteal cycle was really short. I kind of noticed that something was wrong. Now, of course, I went to my doctor and I said, what's going on? Help, help, help. And he yeah. did a full pelvic exam, a full ultrasound to make sure all of my, you know, just everything was, was how it should be because I yeah. had a C-section. Um, so I just, I was really nervous that something got disrupted in there. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and I was good. And he said, you know, you've got, you've got a great ovarian reserve. Everything looks great. Like you conceived quickly the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it shouldn't, it was, shouldn't take you long. Um, and so I, I just, I felt like in my gut, something wasn't right. Um, and I know that breastfeeding, obviously with the, um, you know, just the different hormone levels really can, can offset the estrogen and progesterone. I didn't know to what extent though. And so my husband and I just decided to stop protecting, not really tracking per se. I was still tracking, but we weren't timing it. It wasn't, how, it was sorry, time. How are you tracking? Is this before Mira? Before Mira? Yes. Yeah. And I said, you know what? why not? We're, we're getting close. Her birthday's in April. You know, if it happens two under two, okay. But we also know it takes a couple months or longer. So yeah. what's, what's the harm? 
And so we started just on protecting. I was still tracking with uh, just OP normal OPKs. Again, I noticed that, you know, the ovulation cramps, the signs, I, I was tracking cervical mucus. I was tracking the cramps. I was tracking all of the normal signs that even my body is, is has uniquely, ha you know, I've noticed yeah. about it. And they all lined up with that positive test. I'm like, this is really fast. And I noticed with the, the, um, just the cheap OPKs that my LH surge would like the onset would start the same day I'd peak and then it would drop the exact same day. So within a 24 hour period, I went yeah. from crazy low, crazy high, all the way back down. I'm like, this is impossible to track the long and the short was I'm noticing these changes. I'm identifying that even as I was slowing down breastfeeding, I was almost completely done. I noticed that my cycles were just kind of off. And so March, I told my husband, you know what? We did this January, February try thing. Like March, let's just not, you know, we're, we got Easter coming up, all this stuff. Um, so I, my, my doctor told me, he said, stop tracking. You're driving yourself nuts. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> so the first month we stopped tracking, stopped doing everything. We got pregnant. Okay. And I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea I was pregnant until I did take an OPK and it was positive for five days. Oh, and I'm wow. like, this is a little odd. And I'm Googling, you know, why would an OPK be positive for five days? Yeah. And I took a test and it was, it was more than positive. <laughs> and I'm like, when did this happen? Oh my gosh. And but remember, my hormones were still off. My estrogen was still low. Even I had had recently done the ultrasound with my doctor and my lining was really, really low. And he suspected, he said, Jenna, I don't think you have a luteal cycle defect. What I think you have from everything I'm seeing, you know, from this ultrasound is your lining is so thin because your estrogen is low. So once you stop breastfeeding, it should regulate itself in a couple cycles. Don't, don't freak out about it. Um, but I conceived with that low estrogen. Wow. And so I call my doctor, we do the beta tests and it went from 50 to 15. Oh, and so we just knew, we just knew that it wasn't going to take. And it was heartbreaking because I'm like a second loss. They told me this was a fluke. Yeah. Why is this happening again? Could have been a bad egg, could have been the estrogen, whatever it could have been. But at that point, my husband and I said, let's actually try. Olivia's now one. We want to have another one. So we officially started in April and I bought, uh, I bought Mira. I started looking at it. My friends were telling me about it. They said, you should try this thing. I've heard about it. It sounds so up your alley with all the data and all your, all your information you love to have. And as I'm tracking with the cheap OPKs, I'm like, I can't catch this. I told my husband. I can't catch this the way I used to, yeah. that it's so quick that we miss days, you know, because we didn't know to do it. Yeah. Um, so that was the big struggle for me. And that was what drove me to Mira was I knew I had this rapid onset ovulation after, you know, postpartum, after having a baby, after a C-section, after breastfeeding a year that my body was just different and I needed a better way to track it. And I didn't expect that things would happen so quickly, but, um, month, th month three of trying after the loss. So April, April was the loss. Um, we conceived with Mira the first try. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, I liked, I liked the cheap OPKs because I got to see the progression of the line, but where I was missing was the estrogen surge that occurs before the LH. Yeah. And for me with my body re-regulating after breastfeeding, that was the critical point with Mira to see the numbers numerically, instead of just a line, it would help me be able to see, okay, I can see a pattern here. I did it totally to what Mira said. I said, this cycle, I, I don't even care if we can see, I just want to play with this new toy and yeah. see how it works. We got to a hundred and I said, okay, it's game time. We were at, we were at over a hundred for two days. Then my LH started going and I wouldn't have known it without Mira. That morning, my LH was five. So on a normal OPK, it was just super light. You would never know. By noon that day, we got back from the parade and I was peaked at that wow. point. Yes. I tested That's again. So at, yes. I tested again at three o'clock. It went up a little more. By 8 p.m. it had gone down. 
So I caught it perfect. My husband and I are very, very planned people. We're very type A. When we want to have a kid, we get all the tools and all the things. And when I told him I wanted to buy this mirror tool, he was like, babe, just get it. it this is just is so you. <laughs> The please just don't get wrapped up in it. Don't don't get yourself stressed out about it. And that was what I told myself this cycle was, it's my first time. There's no way it's going to happen. Let's just see how this thing works. Yeah. And it worked. That's, that's awesome. Fair. That's why I wanted to share my story, you know, with on here or however I need to with Mira, because it, I don't think it would have happened as quickly without Mira. I was really struggling to find that surge and it was hit or miss. And like I said, you know, we could, we could have just kept having sex every day, but that just ruins the, the fun and the love and overall joy of what sex is. It just, yeah. yeah. Mira was amazing. And I don't know how it happened. Uh, I ended up meeting Kristen and um, I was telling her about, you know, my cycle and my experiences. And she said, would you like to be part of the PD PDG test? the beta test. And I yeah. said, yes. Oh my gosh. My two loves trying to conceive and data. And I was excited about it. So I did the PD, PDG test mm -hmm. and, um, and that was, that was pretty indicative that things were occurring in my body. <laughs> Tested positive on nine DPO. My LH was rising on Mira. I was still testing. My PDG had been dropping. Uh, which is not, not great. Um, and I was just kind of like, what's going on here? And so I tested because the LH was higher and I'm like, there's gotta be, it's, it's either pregnancy or just period. And sure enough, I was pregnant, but I did a beta test with my doctor. I called them immediately this time and said, let's get blood tests. Let's do a progesterone because I mm -hmm. suspected my progesterone was low. I said my, and I told him my Mira data, I know you probably don't believe in this, but I've been testing my progesterone at home and the levels have been dropping. He said, well, yeah. let's get you in. Sure enough, my progesterone was nine. Oh, it's supposed to be over 10, at least at that point. He said, you know, let's get you on progesterone. And I've, I've been on it ever since. And I didn't have to with either of my other pregnancies, my unhealthy one and Olivia. So it was, it was a new ball game for me. But I wouldn't have known to ask that if I didn't yeah. have the mirror data. That's another part of the story that I wanted to capture for you is how I conceived with this, why I used it. And like, you know, that this was the only tool that really got me there. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that, you know, I was nervous that this pregnancy wasn't going to last. And I had the data to go to my doctor and get the tests I needed. And the great thing about the mirror tool, you know, the real reason I told my husband I wanted it I said, I don't know if this thing is going to work. I'm not telling you that this science thing, that this new app thing is going to work. But what I am telling you is I believe from what Dr. Evans said that my estrogen is low. And what I want to understand is, is my body back to normal? So, I, you know, I started this thing because I just wanted to see if my hormones were right. Mm -hmm. I did see that they were right. And then my husband and I were like, okay. Let's, let's try. It won't happen. It won't happen. And then I got part of the beta test for the PD, the progesterone, we'll just call it progesterone. Yeah. We can't even say it anymore. The progesterone. And, and that helped me not only be able to identify that I did ovulate, mm -hmm. but that I was potentially pregnant. And then when I was pregnant, that my levels were dropping and that something wasn't right. It's kind of come full circle for me. The number one thing people struggle with when they're trying to conceive is the timing in ovulation, but this is all based on some perfect body. That's a robot that ovulates on day 14. And that's the reality is that's, that's very few of us. And yep. it might happen one cycle and it won't happen the next cycle. I mean, every cycle is different. So I just tell women track, don't become obsessed, but just yeah. notice your own patterns and don't be, don't be so wrapped up in, in trying to, um, to have the perfect cycle, just figure out what your normal is. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's how I conceived. I just, I knew my LH was rapid. Yeah. I knew it came really, really fast. And I was like, how am I going to catch this thing? <laughs> no one is perfect. No body is perfect. Literally mm -hmm. no physical body is perfect. And the more data we can have, and the more information we have to empower ourselves, it's either going to help us or it's going to help our doctors help us.